this idea that young people are um, have powerful moral insights that old people just don't understand. Um, I've never, ever had much sympathy for. Yeah, there is a thing about young people, you know, having this sort of emperor has no clothes kind of thing because they don't know much about the past. So they can see things with fresh eyes. That's valuable. Young people have fresh brains, which is important in some, and certainly in some technological fields. Um, there are a lot of people in the sort of Silicon Valley high tech world that, you know, make a case that you just, you, you need a steady supply of, of very young, smart people because there's an elasticity with young brains, you know, so, I mean, I'm, and look, it's better to be young than old, right? It's better to be, um, uh, good looking and thin than the opposite, all other things being equal. Um, it's good to have energy, right? I mean, like there are a lot of advantages to being young, but being uh, morally superior just isn't one of them. And um, and yet there is this, this idea. I mean, it, it goes it goes way back before the boomers. But, you know, there's this idea that's deep seated in parts of the West that we should listen to the children. Right. That, the you know, that the children have something important to tell us um, and that youthful passion is persuasive for some reason that I've never been able to tell. I remember uh, I had a lot of fun with it at the time, but in Hillary Clinton's It Takes a Village, she has this passage where she says, you know, um, some of the most uh, brilliant theologians I've ever spoken to have been five-year-olds. And um, I think that's really stupid. <laughs> um, uh, I get, you know, I get the point that she's trying to make, which is, I think that she's trying to make, which is that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, wisdom from the mouths of babes, kind of like they don't know why things are the way they are. So they ask, you know, outside the box questions or they say things that are sweet and endearing and all that kind of stuff. But if you're getting your actual theological instruction from a five-year-old, um, I don't want to talk to you about theology. Um, and, uh, and so anyway, there's this, there's this deep seated notion, this deep seated deference to youthful passion as if it has a moral authority that is unearned. And, um, and so I keep hearing that's, that's right. That's how I got on this. Um, I keep hearing people on TV saying how shocked they are that, uh, there's so much more anti-Semitic, anti anti-Semitism and um, and insensitivity to Jewish concerns among young people, and their explanation is, well, it's because they're 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 so distant from the Holocaust, right? I heard Caddy Kay saying that I think yesterday morning on Morning Joe, you know, and and she was I mean, this is what put it in my head yesterday because I was like, wow, I just keep hearing this. Um, I don't think it was original to her. I think it's one of these cliches that's bouncing around all over the place that. Oh, that explains it. These kids have no cultural attachment to or living memory of the Holocaust. And um, so they feel more liberated to say these things and, and have more sympathy for Palestinians than they do for Jews. Now, as an analytical matter, I don't think it's stupid, right? I don't think it's entirely wrong. I'm not sure how much actual explanatory power it has. I think there are other things going on. I think the settler colonialism BS probably explains more of it. Um, I think TikTok probably explains more of it. Um, I think the the growth in the size of the domestic Muslim and Middle Eastern population explains more of it. This is not an argument against letting you know uh, people from the Middle East into the country or anything. I just, but obviously, it creates. Um, a different sort of political mix, right? It just does, right? I mean, there's a reason why Rashida Tlaib is has the constituency that she does, and um, but I got to say, as a moral argument or as an ex as an explanation, I think it's a very limited value, but some, right? I think it has some explanatory power, but as a 
excuse, right? This is one of big, my big things is the differences between explanations and excuses. As an excuse, it is just shitty. It is really, really dumb and bad. Like the idea that because you weren't, I mean, I wasn't alive during the Holocaust, right? I mean, again, I'm a little bit of an exception given my upbringing and whatnot, but like, like there are most people alive today weren't alive during the Holocaust. And most of the people who were alive during the Holocaust have vanishing little actual memory of it, right? Because, you know, um, they were probably kids. I mean, Joe Biden, I believe was born in, was it 48, 44, something like that, you know? So like, um, we're not talking about a world in which, um, large numbers of people have actual memories of, of the Holocaust or the liberation of the camps or any of that kind of stuff. Um, the, but regardless, you know, look, slavery was a really long time ago, longer ago than the Holocaust. And I never hear anybody say, well, you know, slavery was so long ago that therefore, you know, you know, some of these ideas, it's time to bring them back into wide circulation. Um, you shouldn't need to have a fresh memory of the Holocaust to um, take offense when murderers break into people's homes and shoot kids in front of their parents and parents in front of their kids. You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't have to have been raised on never again to um, be horrified at paragliders sneaking into a country and slaughtering people um, about you know, a baby being put in an oven about families being burned alive, um, like kids being dismembered while still alive. If Anthony Blinken's testimony is correct, um, you know, this should not, um, you, you know, it's like, it's kind of slanderous to say, um, but for the example of the Holocaust, all of these people would even more people would be okay with the wanton torture and murder of civilian Jews just because they're Jews. Right. I mean, it's like, like, again, I, I, I get it as a matter of cultural analysis, why, you know, it, it, it's a contributing factor, but like, let's not pretend that, um, it excuses anything. And this just sort of gets to my, my, my broader point is that, you know, young people can be terrible people. Um, in fact, most murders are committed by young people. Um, most war crimes, the actual people doing the war criming are, are young people. Um, most crimes of passion are by young people. I'm not trying to demonize young people. I'm just trying to um, demystify the angelic presum the presumptions of angelicness about um, young people. Um, as a statistical matter, it is an incredibly well-established finding in the social science literature that young people are more ignorant than old people. In fact, young people start out not knowing anything. We call them babies. And then over time, their state of almost total ignorance is remedied. And that process isn't complete when they're 18 to 24 year olds. Um, some of the worst, most horrific genocidal movements in human history, including Nazism, started out as essentially youth movements. 